Welcome back to the Rare Book Views channel, where I am hoping to get to talk to you about some rare books. I'm a collector and a book fan in general, and I'm excited to have stumbled upon this online community where I get to tell people about all the fun things that I find when I go book hunting, and I'm going book hunting today. There is a local sale that I've been to many times, and they have it every four or six weeks as they feel like it, and they're having an extra one to benefit Ukraine, so I am lucky to be able to make time and go. I don't always get to go, but this time I will. And it's very interesting because it's a good sale, it's a big warehouse, it's very low prices, it's fantastic people watching always, and uh, usually they have a special preview sale for dealers and it's $50 to get in. And I've totally done it before and it is hard to justify the cost, but it's really fun. And that means that when you go to the general sale, there's no fee to get in. The dealers have already had first crack at it, but I believe because this is a random sale that that won't happen. So I'm very excited to see what will happen when there aren't any dealers there first. I can't wait. So let's go see what we can find. It turned out there was no dealer preview, so I was getting first look at the books, but because it was a sale that was mid-schedule, I think they probably didn't shelve as many books or possibly get as many donations. So I'm, not, I'm still not sure what would happen if you got there before the dealers, I still know. But I did find great things. I had a list of stuff that I'm always looking for the books that I collect, I'm always looking for a rare copy of something, and you can find them. At the sale but I also have a wish list of fiction that I just want to read and for my friends I have a bunch of friends with kids who are big readers kids books fascinating often at the used book sale or at a used bookstore at a really reasonable price people it seems like get maybe multiple copies is my diagnosis so you'll find them brand new condition at great prices and I love getting to connect seeing them at a great price in some kind of reduce reuse situation and a friend who needs a copy. So I have a long list for people's kids, what they're looking for, and I am always looking for things to sock away on the present shelf for people's birthdays and holiday presents and things like that. So this one had a great time. Found a bunch of things on my list. I have a friend, her son is really into these books, Bad Kitty. I've never heard of these, but I am excited about them. This is definitely the genre where almost chapter books there's a lot of picture on the text and it's basically graphic novel which is really fun i think and when you're at the age where you're trying to get into reading and the wall of text is too much i think some illustrations to move along exciting i've never heard this one this kid is into cats in general and this series looks great these books are in totally like new condition there's no writing in them the spines look good the price of this sale for children's books is a dollar and the volunteer who rang me up said, ring you up, I don't know why we say that, there's no cash register or anything, there's no ringing, but who was charging me money, said, oh, I'll, he was charging me 50 cents, and I pointed it out to him that he was undercharging me, and he said, well, I'm just trying to do you a favor. 
And I said, well, it's for charity. So I just put the rest, the difference in the donation bucket. So I don't know if these were 50 cents or a dollar, but that is a great price. The list price on the books is about seven. And I did look it up on Amazon. They run for paperback six ish. So a dollar good price. I also found, I have a friend, her son is into this series, The Diary of the Wimpy Kid. Very similar, a lot of illustrations. These look super fun. I would have read this when I was this age. And this is uh, basically a brand new copy and it was a dollar. The listed price is about 14 and on Amazon, these are somewhere between seven and 10. So a dollar, it's a great price. And this is on my list for a while. A friend of mine asked me to try to find these. This is Pickle Wiggle which I definitely read as a kid and are kind of hard to find. This is a box set of four, still in the shrink wrap, and was a dollar. I'm really happy about that. It's really made my day. <laughs> okay, I found some cool stuff that is vintage. I found a Winnie the Pooh. This is the, uh, is this the 1940s? This is the 1960s format. This is the one that appears in the newer movie of Winnie the Pooh when they zoom in on the book. It's this cover. This guy is a little bit, it's been on a shelf at an awkward angle and is now retained that shape, which sometimes you'll hear people say this book is cocked and that's what it means. It's been at this weird angle for so long that it's stuck that way. And this is why you should really store your shelf, your books straight up and down. Some people stack them. You'll see that they look beautiful. It's really bad for the books because if you get them on the shelf, just a little bit off, you end up with this situation for the rest of your life. So it's really better for books to be stored this way. This guy was probably actually like this, but in any event, Winnie the Pooh, I always pick these up. This was also a dollar. If I can find all four and reunite them and find them in your home, they'll probably sell for maybe 15 on eBay. And I have a whole video where I talk about the different editions of Winnie the Pooh. I'll put a link in the notes in case you're a Winnie the Pooh fan. So that was a good find. I also got, this is an interesting copy of Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. Um, this is vintage, but it is a book club edition and it is easy to tell because it is right here on the dust jacket. Sometimes there is on the back here on the actual book, there will be what's called a slug and it's a small printer's impression. This one does not have it. So that you would have to have the dust jacket maybe to tell um, this is a great book. I found a vintage copy recently and I feel so lucky to have found it. I think it's a third printing. This is the book club. So book club, the way that they make the business model here is you subscribe. So they have a for sure amount of income coming in monthly and they're reducing the cost of the book by either shrinking it down a little bit. They'll cut it down and it'll be a slightly smaller size. And that cost then is a lower production cost or sometimes they'll cut the, so this would just be smaller, there'll be less margin. Sometimes they reduce the print and sometimes the paper is thinner. So in some way they're basically making the physical item less expensive to produce and then selling them at a slightly less cost. So there's a smaller margin, but because they have a subscription service, they know how many copies they need. So they end up at usually at bookstores, at um, nicer, retail collector bookstores, they don't accept book club editions uh, because they are just not as valuable to collectors. This is one of the ones that retain value. So even though this is the book club, because it, and this is in really nice shape, the dust jacket is really nice. There's a tiny, couple tiny, very small nicks here. And there's some kind of, it looks like there was a paper clip that again has been on here a long time. Don't do this to your dust jackets. Be nice to them. Uh, but overall it's in good shape. On eBay, this will sell for 25 on up, and I paid $3 for this. So that will help my book buying fund. I found a copy of Rebecca by Daphne, can't pronounce her last name, Du Maurier. Uh, this was, it's a really great book. It's very creepy and suspenseful, which is one of my favorites. Um, this edition, I had a copy, and it wasn't in quite this nice of condition. And when the Netflix movie came out, which was fantastic, everyone wanted a vintage copy of the book and I sold it for far more than I paid for it. And now I've been on the lookout for one in better condition. This one's pretty good. It has a slight discoloration here. Every copy I've ever seen of this book 
has this action going on. The webbing from the binding is showing at the title page, every single copy. And I've had maybe four or five of these go through the house thinking, maybe this one's in nice condition. So this one I can't decide if I'm gonna keep or if I'm gonna move it on. And then this is really cool. A copy of Lonesome Dove. This is one of Larry McMurtry's biggest hits. And people who like Larry want a nice vintage copy of this book. And I had a friend who was a collector, was on the lookout for this, and I looked for years, and then I found him, I think, a sixth printing. This is a very handy copy. Simon and Schuster are pretty simple. It's the number line. This is a second, I believe it's the second printing of the first edition. And if you know better, please tell me. But I paid $3 for this, and this will sell on eBay for about 20. Shipping is gonna be killer. This is a giant book. This is, whew. So I am excited about that, because those will, fuel my habit. I found some cool things at this sale to keep also. I found this book, Ghosts and Witches, <laughs> and it's vintage. It says first published in 1954, and I tried to find any copies that have been sold online to compare, and I can't find one that doesn't say that. So then I can't tell, is that a first edition? It seems like it was once first published in 1954. It can't be that this copy was the first, but maybe it is. Um, I've seen one with a dust jacket and it's so cool and strange and I'm now I'm gonna want one. But the illustrations are also um, pretty good. I like a good suspense and I really love a good vintage book about witches because it sometimes makes me think, all you really need to do to be accused of witchcraft is be a woman and smart or possibly with an income. It's good I was born in this century. Um, I found a copy of a Agatha Christie. This, I believe, is a book club, and I'll tell you the points on this guy. But I have recently kind of fallen in love with Agatha, and I don't really have many of her books, so now I'm on the lookout, and I feel like a hardback is what I need. Um, this one, so we talked about book club, smaller size. This one looks a little bit small to me. It's got this code on the back, and sometimes the book of the month they do this instead of an ISBN, it's just got a few digits. The cover looks pretty normal to me. It says Dot and Me, which is a real publisher, not a book club. And it doesn't have a slug, so I can't actually tell. I might do a little more research on this and see if I can figure it out. But to me, the paper looks a little bit thin. Telltale sign. And then it doesn't really say anything on the copyright page. So I will do a little bit more research, but if you know what the original copy of this looks like, let me know if this isn't it, because I would love to know. But it's hardback, so for now it will stay on my shelf. I have to get enough of them to read in order, I think. Somebody saw one of my videos where I found, uh, I think it was Perot, and said, just FYI, I was the last one, and she said, I would not start with the last one. And I think that person was right, so I think I might maybe get them from the library and read in order, but collect them as I find them. What do you think? Anyone? Chime in. Tell me what to do. Because I'm really excited to like Agatha. I also found one current piece of fiction that I'm very excited. It's been on my list for quite a while. The reviews are really good. I definitely read Gentlemen in Moscow. Yes. And Rules of Civility, both by the same author. Amor Tells. Again, my pronunciation. Probably not spot on. Um, Rules of Civility, I loved very vivid, very like you had been teleported in time to the 1920s. Um, Gentleman in Moscow, also just so unusual, different kind of storytelling approach. And just, I felt like I was there. So I heard that this uh, got really good reviews and I've been on the lookout and I have not been able to get it from the library. So that was also $3 a bargain. And as you can see, I don't have a lot of shelf room to spare. So this book might get passed on to someone else. So if you are if you know me and you are looking for this book, tell me you can be on the, the list of people who might receive it next. So all in all, I had a really wonderful time. I'm really excited that the proceeds from the sale go to a good charity. I got to hang out in line before it opened with some characters. <laughs> there was some really funny talk at the beginning. Um, and I had, I was, it was really good for hunting. I found things on shelves and I got a little bit of a rush and I found some things that are going to be useful and it was just a positive day and we all need more of those. So I felt really good about it. I found some cool things. 
if you are a collector, if these are any of your books, please let me know uh, what edition that you like and what you're reading. Thank you as always for watching. It's so fun to have something to talk about after I go to a fun sale and I find co cool things. It's fun to make a video. So if you enjoy these, please do me a favor and let me know. Please like the video if this is the kind of video you like. And if you're into books, please subscribe so I can talk to you more. Thanks so much and happy reading.